Uh, listen, it's quarter to two. This is Simon Logan. Do you ever think I've got a bit of a creative spark? You know, I'm feeling a bit creative, but I don't really know how to use it to ignite my burning passion. Do you ever feel that? Yeah. It's just me, then. All right. Listen, the Reverend Jim Craig might be able to help fan those flames for you. Next Saturday, week tomorrow, in Gateshead, he's holding a blank canvas event. What's that then? Well, he came along to tell me all about it. The idea came from him and a friend scribbling stuff down on the back of an envelope. As you do. It's it's how all wonderful ideas start, I think. Um, I'm sure Einstein started his theory of relativity on the back of an envelope. <laughs> Yeah, there's a friend of mine, Pete Ross, who runs spoken word and poetry events and, and drama events and things like that in the area, and we wanted to run something in, in a venue that people would find friendly, so rather than having it far off somewhere. So there's a new Costa in the middle of uh, brand new Trinity Square in Gateshead, and we, um, they're very open to holding events, so we thought, perfect, we'll, 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 use, we'll, we'll, we'll book that. For people like me and like Pete who work in the arts, but find our own personal creativity time is squeezed out because we're kind of doing it for others. We thought, ah, let's run something kind of for ourselves, but understanding that there's plenty loads of people out there who are busy and, and need an excuse to yes. themselves to create. Yes. What is it exactly? A, a blank canvas event. I'm not sure if I've heard of one of those before. That's because we've invented it. Ah. <laughs> so what is it then? How would you describe that? It's uh, an opportunity to start from scratch, I suppose. One of the big bugbears that artists have is you're looking for a big idea or a good idea and you won't start doing anything until you get the idea. This is kind of giving you a prescription to come along with a blank piece of paper, a blank canvas or whatever your version is in your art form and just do anything and we'll facilitate some nice music in the background uh, run a slideshow just to sort of chill people out and people are invited to create anything and talk about it at the end. When you say anything, do you mean just pictures or could someone come along and, and uh, you know, create something out of clay? or? <laughs> well, people what? tend to bring their own things, their own materials. Right. You want to bring clay and, and uh, you're not going to chuck it about so that the nice people at Costa <laughs> get annoyed, then fine. Um, <laughs> photography works quite well, obviously, ah. and we can link up with Instagram and provide a, a free, uh, up-to-date um, instant slideshow of pictures that are being taken. So anything that's kind of portable, not too messy. Yes. The timing of this is interesting. It's six till nine on a Saturday night. Now, many would be, you know, taking to the pubs and clubs. <laughs> this is a real alternative to going out on the lash, isn't it? It is, it is. Uh, I, think, yeah, I think you've got to be a coffee fan, really, because um, that can take you to a similar place if you have too many coffees. Is it um, no alcohol event? It's no alcohol just because they don't sell alcohol. Uh, and I guess it'd be a bit strange taking alcohol into a coffee shop. If someone turned up with some. <laughs> yeah, Get I'd out. have to have a quiet word, wouldn't I? Yeah. It's all about the coffee. Um, you want people to make new work and, and then show it on the night. Do you, think, do you think that could be terrifying for people in a way? I think it is terrifying. There's an invitation throughout the night if you want to talk about uh, your work that you've just done or if you'd rather stay quiet, that's fine. Uh, some people have produced poems. We've done one event so far. This is the second, and we had a couple of poets who wrote an entire new poem and, and performed that or read that at the end of the night. So it's entirely up to your confidence, I suppose. Do you know, the thing is, we never know who we're going to meet on this show through the afternoon on BBC Newcastle Radio for the North East. Jim Craig is a reverend. The Reverend Jim Craig. You wouldn't think it to look at him. I mean that in a nice way, Jim. It's uh, also the case that he's the only community arts chaplain in the country. He actively promotes the arts through his sanctuary arts space in Gateshead. But what does that entail, all this community arts business? He tells me in just a moment. <laughs> BBC Newcastle, let's get back to the Reverend. You Can't keep the Reverend waiting. The Reverend Jim Craig is the only community arts chaplain in the country. He promotes the arts through the Sanctuary Arts Space in Gateshead. 
Would you describe yourself as a vicar with a difference? I think every vicar makes a difference. <laughs> uh, Very diplomatic answer. <laughs> it means I have more time for doing creative stuff, which has always been a bit controversial. Like, should we pay a full-time stipend, that's the wage, for a vicar to, to do creative things in the community? But it does... I think it actually creates community where there's often not community. It draws people together who are all, um, who are all jointly terrified together. And that sort of joint terror <laughs> with my presence trying to sort of ease things off seems to go down Bond quite well. people together. Yeah, it does bond people. Brings people together. Are people surprised when they realise what your job is and, and that you have this side to your... Uh... I think people are surprised. Yes, I'm always... After eight and a half years, I'm always introducing, reintroducing myself. I'm the arts chaplain. What? Yes, what's that, that then? do? Just like um, I said a few minutes ago. What's that then? But what's interesting is when we're doing workshops, they're even more surprised at what they can do, given the, given the right bit of encouragement, because people have a load of educational hang-ups, usually the last generation, but not just that as what well. What do you mean? What do you mean? Educational? Well, they might have picked up a pencil, hmm. and if they didn't, get a perfectly drawn picture the teacher would say nope don't bother you know you can't draw that's not for you ah. uh, ignore it and, and 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 it's like riding a bike uh, i went to art college and i uh, that was about 20 years ago and when i pick up a pencil now because i'm kind of off the bike so to speak it's it's a bit bleh, a bit sketchy a bit <laughs> did i really go to art college what did i learn uh, so you lose the habit so it takes you a while to train your eyes to get it, it back yeah yeah you're based in the heart of Gateshead, town centre, where there's been, you know, massive development, hasn't there? Mm. Have people behind all this change kind of liaised with you uh, and taken your community into consideration? Have they liaised with me? Well, it's, it's, it's certainly succeeded in getting, I suppose, the work of the church into more nooks and crannies than I think it had done before. The church has always been good at uh, liaising with the civic community and doing sort of formal services with the mayor and that kind of thing, or it's been very good at working with the elderly. But there's a lot of people in between who tend to get sort of lost. And at the minute, um, I'm branching out from what might be standard arts chaplaincy, what I've done before, and going into work, the workplace. So I'm now the, I'm now the chaplain of Tesco, <laughs> um, which it. is a great way to meet people, and it's a great way to show a little bit of what of, of, of what God feels for His world. That what you're do you do to... when you go to Tesco? Well, at the minute, I'm just introducing myself because right. people are just to sort of take away some of that. Whoa, was the vicar over there? What's he doing? I'll break that awkwardness by introducing myself and uh, having a chat. And of course, people are more open to chatting with the vicar or to be seen chatting with the vicar, especially if you're staff. If they chat with themselves, they might be um, in trouble for for dawdling. So there's a kind of there's a kind of proactive stress release, I think, as well as, as visiting people's workplaces. Mm. Is um, it just for the for the workers, or would you chat to the customers too? If I give the customers a wave, especially if they're parishioners, or if they you know if they give me a wave, I'm not gonna <laughs> not gonna turn just, my back. I just wonder what people think. You know, I'd love to know actually because. Uh, <laughs> It, you know, it, there's quite a tradition of... It's, it's referred to as industrial mission because it started with factories in Victorian time of when they had no rights. And obviously, we've got a few more rights these days. Reverend Jim Craig on our show, BBC Newcastle Radio for the North East, is the chaplain of Tesco. <laughs> Every little helps. Ever fancy being a bit creative? Have a passion to be creative, be it photography or... be it painting, drawing, modelling, whatever... Well, we have a reverend called Jim Craig who might be able to help you. Uh, on Saturday, week tomorrow in Gateshead, he's holding a blank canvas event. He came along to tell me all about it. I asked him what got him interested in the arts in the first places. In the first place, dear reverend. It was the only thing I could do, <laughs> basically. <laughs> I uh, bet it wasn't. I was never very academic. I was just always drawing. And then when I did my placement as you often do whatever year that was probably fifth form the old fifth mm, form mm, mm. uh went to an advertising agency and thought oh i want to be a um uh, you know an advertising kind of person about a year later started a level art and i remember the first time i saw a book of paintings by edvard monk and just something that's the scream the fella, scream, isn't it? The scream fella, that's the one yeah. and and having never really been introduced to modern art apart from van gogh you know boring um, nice, but boring. Cause everyone, everyone, like likes him. everyone likes him. You, I know. As a student, you want to look, look for something that no one else likes. And came across the screen and thought, oh, my goodness, what is it? It was like mm. a kind of instant 
uh, an instant hit of a sort of immediately wanted to know more about that yeah 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 and that was it i was i was just i knew i was an artist rather than a graphic designer a little bird told me that a recent event at uh, the sanctuary art space when when given the choice of picking a song to play <laughs> you chose sham 69's borstal breakout are you a punk rock reverend well, I'm not really old enough, so I think that's why I like the music How old of the era. I was, uh, I would have, uh, what, 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 what year would that have been? Sham 69. That been 77, 78, 78, 78 I would have been 79. Six. Right, OK. Um, so, um, so how come you like it then? I just, I love anything with Jimmy Percy. authenticity and energy. So you, when someone's shouting something and you know that they're angry, I was going to say another word there, beginning with P, <laughs> but I'll, we know when they're angry and it's coming from their heart, they're authentically angry, you can mm. hear it. You can mm, hear that mm. kind of, and maybe that's the heart of punk, of, of just shouting your opinions because no one else is listening. There's a band called, uh, well, two bands I came across in the 80s, early 90s, Fugazi and Mudhoney, that sort of... Don't know them. That sort of introduced me to sort of singing your politics, basically, mm. or shouting your politics. But I think, I think <laughs> sometimes we lack a bit of... I'm probably going to get it in the, in the neck from colleagues, but I, th I sometimes think we lack a bit of passion in the church, you know. Mm. Get, get a bit of lamp, get, get lampooned a bit for you know you more not, tea, vicar. I'd rather, yes, yes, yes. That more passion, of vicar. That's me. I mean, to look at you, there you are with your sort of you know your trendy haircut and uh, your sharp suit and and the dog collar. Do we still call it that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're you're not the image that most people have of a vicar, are you? You you are a you are a bit of a rebel vicar. I'm thinking. Well, I suppose it's, it's yeah, I, I hope it's not just skin deep because <laughs> I quite like the idea and I hope I don't like it too much of being, um, uh, what's the word, uh, approachable. Mm. And I think the more you look sort of a mix of formal and informal, the more people think, eh, you might be all right. That's... I bet people have uh, kind of preconceptions about you, though, don't they? Yeah, yeah, especially in Tesco. Or even misconceptions. Them, you can see them kind of staring at you. What's that vicar doing here? What's he doing? Is it yes. fancy dress? Go away. <laughs> <laughs> How can we find out more details about the Blank Canvas event that we were talking about before? My Facebook profile is facebook.com backslash stripping vicar. <laughs> so, of course it is. That's going to stick in people's minds, isn't it? <laughs> Stripping Vicar, one word, obviously. So if you see my page, um, um, I'm always posting about this event, so it'll be there on the, on the sort of front bit of, of, of that profile page. He likes a him, but he likes a sham. Thank you, Reverend. Simon Logan, BBC Newcastle, radio for the North East.